Welcome, everyone. Good afternoon, good morning, good wherever you are in the world. Um, it is the Qvert Community Meeting, and this is the uh, 22nd of November, 2023. Um, for those of us who are just joining, um, I'll reiterate, if you could please add your name and the attendees, which is here, um, all on top of one another, because it's more fun that way. All righty, we've got a reasonably light agenda, um, but we'll start the way that we normally do by inviting anyone who um, this is their first time or they've been here before but haven't introduced themselves. We'll give you the opportunity to introduce yourself now. So um, I'll mute and just pipe up. All righty, I'll take it as a note. Uh, there's not a lot of point doing the schedule check-in because there isn't one for 1 1.2. Um, and the upcoming CFPs, I think, are, I apologize, I still haven't updated this. Um, this Sunday at 11.59 p.m. Uh, Central European time is the submission um, deadline for KubeCon, Cloud NativeCon, EU 24. Um, yeah, it is It is a big deal. Uh, it's always good to have a lot of Qubit uh, people there and a large presence there. Um, this is the standard session um, closure. Uh, it includes um, solo presentations, co-presentations, tutorials, and panels. I think that, that covers everything. Um, if you are interested in submitting something and you're not entirely sure, you know, if the idea that you have um, is worth it, I highly recommend uh, submitting. Uh, and if you'd like some feedback, um, you're welcome to ping me on Slack, on the Kubernetes Slack. Um, and uh, if I'll, I'll hopefully, I'm making time for Thursday and Friday um, for anyone who uh, is interested in submitting something and needs a review or would like a, um, uh, what do we call them? Sanity check. And I think Andrew, back to the uh, 1.2 schedule check-in. Um, yes. Do we need to be creating a 1.2 schedule yet? I think it should. I think we should. So someone needs to. Um, okay. You're welcome to do it. I I won't do it. Put it that way. Um, I can tell you that because uh, I looked today that Kubernetes 1.29 is releasing on the 5th of December, um, which I think we're currently uh, 15 weeks behind that, which puts us, I think, at the start of March. My maths work? I would have I would have guessed Valentine's Day, but okay. Well, I mean, whoever makes the schedule can decide when the release is. <laughs> Fair enough. We almost had a, a Halloween release for 1.1, but uh, we delayed it a week strategically to coincide with uh, KubeCon in Chicago. And it was a good thing we did. Um, uh, oh yeah, I, I haven't actually talked much about KubeCon Chicago. Um, I'll, I'll take a, just a second to do that now. I have a trip report that I'm gonna send out to Kubert Dev. Um, I'm probably not gonna get a chance to send that out until uh, likely next week, but... Um, it was it was really good. Did, did I talk about it last week? I'm still like pretty jet lagged, unfortunately. Did I talk about it last week? I don't think so. I don't remember. Yeah, I, I don't remember. <laughs> um, it was it was good. It was um, just briefly. It was smaller than uh, KubeCon Amsterdam, which had ten thousand attendees. Uh, the Estimate that I've heard, and I haven't seen the CNCF numbers yet, um, put it at around 8,000. Uh, it's a little bit smaller. Um, we had a full-time booth. We had, I think, slightly less uh, traffic, but compared to Amsterdam, where we got absolutely slammed on um, the first day and then it tapered off. Interestingly, this time we, um, we had really consistent traffic across all three days, even the last day, which is about half the length of time as any of the other days. Um, and one thing uh, I think that was really interesting about it was that 
um, a year ago in Detroit, there was a reasonable amount of, I'd call it ambivalence, um, and sometimes like almost an aggr aggressive kind of ambivalence. Um, Amsterdam, we had a really positive response, but uh, this time in Chicago, I think we have an even more positive response. Um, people were really interested to hear about uh, importing virtual machines, particularly from VMware and OpenStack, um, where a lot of the use cases. People were interested in, um, uh, you know, under understanding, I guess, the, the particular storage and the network side of these things um, and what's required um, and like any kind of complexities involved there. Um, there was a request if we could have some kind of a non-recommendation overview of, you know, if someone's coming from, say, OpenStack and has Neutron as their network provider and whatever the storage in OpenStack would be, what that would look like on the Kubert side of things, not really recommending, but, you know, at least putting and giving them a, an idea of, of um, where to direct their attention and similarly coming from VMware. Um, so that's a, a potentially interesting RFI, RFE. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, we had, a, I think, a well-attended maintainer talk, about 80 to 100 people. Um, oh, another thing. Um, in Amsterdam, I'd noticed that um, there was, like most people were, were uh, pretty happy with the project. We did get um, a bunch of people kind of drop by who are users um, and, you know, thank us as representatives for the work that we do which is really good um, and always nice to hear. Um, but uh, in Amsterdam, there was kind of like a, once they heard that bare metal was really the, the way forward for our project, um, that was kind of a, a, a deal breaker for a bunch of people. Less so in Chicago. There was only one person I talked to um, in the entire three days that was like, oh, we're, we're cloud only. Um, everyone else was like, yeah, yeah, bare metal um, on-prem. That's all good for us. Um, which was, yeah, a kind of a, a nice turnaround. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll send out a trip report. I'll, I'll stop showing your ear off and we'll uh, keep going with the agenda and the notes. Um, when we do, uh, one, just one thing, um, when we do come up with the schedule stew for 1.2, um, it will be worth paying attention to uh, KubeCon, which is the 18th of March to the 22nd of March. Um, Coinciding our release did get us um, a lot of uh, free and easy promotion via the CNCF. And that drove a lot of interest in our direction and got us mentioned in a couple of the um, the keynotes and stuff like that. Um, cool. Yeah. A back channel discussion that Federico has volunteered to do it. Oh, excellent. Um, Save applause for you, Federico. And thanks for taking that on. All righty. We have, I think, um, who mentioned this? Was it Or mentioned this on the mailing list? Proposal for replacing past network interface API and implementation? Yes, exactly. We like to, to replace uh, covert core past network binding with the, the past network binding plugin. Using the emerging uh, network binding API, we introduced a few weeks ago in the community. And we like to hear some feedback from uh, users, specifically those who use past, and uh, discuss uh, how, to, how to conduct this transition. We, we, what we had in mind is uh, spreading it across uh, to release, the next two releases, where the first uh, phase, the first release, uh, using past uh, API will be will raise warnings, and in the in phase two, the follow-up release, where uh, past, past using past uh, interface API will be blocked, uh, and uh, it will not uh, be possible anymore. It will uh, require users to work with the the new way to use past using the network binding API. And it's important to mention that in both phases, running VMs uh, will not be disrupted and uh, it should be stable. So please give us some feedback, your concerns, and we love to 
to give solutions to, to them if there is any. Thanks. Cool. Thanks for that. Um, yeah. You all have the link there if you have some feedback to give. And there's uh, a beautiful proposal there to read through. I have a giant white box. Alrighty. Um, I think quarantine test. I think this was sent through if a member on the mailing list. Um, I see Lubo's jumped on something. Thank you very much, Lubo. Uh, Brian, was there anything you wanted to add to this? No, just thanks very much. We got very uh, got the attention I was looking for, so that's great. Excellent. That's what we like to hear. There is nothing on the open floor. So we'll jump into pull requests. And as usual, if, um, if anything springs to mind or you've forgotten something as we move through the next few um, scrubs, by all means, add it to the open floor and direct my attention to it if, um, if I don't happen to notice it. Righty. Uh, but let's just see. Okay, no one's come to this. Version 0.58 Prometheus Qvert is included in the labels of Vert Launcher, but not version 1.0. Monitoring of Vert Launcher is necessary. Hmm. Um, is there anyone from the, I guess, the monitoring or even just the uh, compute team that is able to uh, take a look at this? Sure, I will comment on it. Cool. Do you want me to um, add you or are you, you're all good? Yeah, sure, you can. Okay. Well, thanks. Thank you. Next. This is a Brian. Yeah, I think okay. I think we're all good on this one. Uh, thanks again, Lubo. All righty. Um, and it looks like we got some people looking at this as well. Excellent. Thank you, everyone. Um, onto the mailing list. CDI 1.58 was released. Um, is there anyone from the storage team that wants to have a quick little bit of hooray for this? Yeah, so... Uh... CDI 58 released, and uh, as you can see from the notable changes section, a lot of bug fixes, lots of them are critical ones, and a few nice enhancements as well. So, all right. I'll second that. Hooray! Um, and this, ah, oh yeah, there it is, meant to be used with Cuba at 1.1. That's awesome. Congratulations to everyone who works in the CDI. And we've got two bugs. Let's see if anyone's beating me to it. Uh, no, okay. Unable to export mirror PVC. Uh, okay. Not, a, not an awesome bug description. Is there enough information uh, presented here? not enabled okay yeah it looks like that they just have to enable the feature gate if you look deny the request feature gate not enabled um that's the problem all right yeah yeah um yeah that's uh that sounds like a job for our user guide <laughs> and then feature gate All righty. Oh, there it is. Yeah, let's be a little bit For the admission webhook. 
it, yeah, in order to use the export feature, the feature gate has to be enabled. Uh, okay. Uh, the export. Um. Okay, thank you. Most VM can't make a virtual machine snapshot. Um, okay, it seems like this operation is not allowed to a VM with QEMU guest agent installed. Is that true? Is that expected behavior? Um, oh, I think this is something that, um, so they're using 59. I think this is something that was fixed later. Uh, if you tag me, I can maybe update it. I think this is fixed in one o. Awesome. And I did not see anything here that was new. I think we covered these last week. Um, in which case, that is the end of our very short meeting this week, unless someone has anything that they would like to add, um, anything that they've thought of. Um, I just feel like saying. Happy Thanksgiving to those that celebrate. All right. It's Thanksgiving, what, tomorrow? Yes. Thanksgiving to our U.S. dwelling compatriots. Um, yeah, anything, anything else I'd like to throw in there before we close out? All righty. Um, I'd like to say something. Oh, I heard someone unmute. Did they? If you did, go for it. And do I remember that I wanted to ask you something about KubeCon NA you were attended recently. There was a nice uh, CubeWeird t-shirt so with a nice design. And is there a chance it appears somewhere in some, I don't know, some store that we can purchase that swag? I saw this t-shirt on uh, for Peter, Peter Lotterbach and uh, it was a nice one. A nice, uh... Oh, um... Is it uh, Kubevert in the ecosystem? Perhaps. Uh, um, possibly. Like uh, I, I, we had, uh, no, we did like a limited run of them of about 100. I have uh, one double extra large and I think oh. four smalls left, uh, which I managed to get back here in Barcelona. Um, not entirely sure. We we might do the same thing for like for Paris. Um, we might do a different design. Um, but that's positive feedback, and I will definitely keep you in mind um, in the future. There are a couple that got back to Bruno that I'm aware of, um, but yeah. it was a. Uh, uh, a, a bit of a, a crazy time. So there might be one, and if it is not going asking, I can um, see if we can send it to you. Mm, thanks. Nice. All righty. I will, uh, what, what size are you? Because uh, that's important. Actually, double XL. Double XL. Double XL? All righty. We'll, I'll see how we go. Uh, if not, would you be happy with the double, the, oh, that is the double XL. Okay. Oh, I might be able to send you the one I have um, in a box here. Fantastic. Awesome. Thank you very much. 
You're welcome. And similarly, if anyone is a size small, um, I have a couple of spare shirts that I was going to take to the next conference that we go to. Um, yeah. Um, what did I want to say? Oh, yeah. Uh, just, yeah. Um, one thing, I guess, is that I get the pleasure of having people thank me for the work that we do on Qvert. But really, it's all like um, there's a lot of positive feedback that should be directed towards you. Um, and that includes everyone on this meeting and anyone who happens to see this uh, in the recording or, or whatever. So I should add this to the agenda. Um, a huge thanks. And I'll make sure to include it in the trip report. I send that to Qvert Dev. Um, but yeah, thank you all very much. There's a, there is a, I think from my experience, a, a growing buzz and a growing interest in Qvert as a project. Um, and uh, it'll be interesting to see whether or not we can, we can convert that into uh, positive contributions as well. So thank you all very much. Um, yeah, not just for all the work you're doing, but for attending this meeting. Uh, so thank you. Um, yeah, have a lovely day. Have a lovely weekend. And we will see you next week. Cheers. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye.